Let's go ahead and talk about polarity and how that relates to molecular polarity. So we've previously talked about this idea of what polarity means with regards to bonds. So if we talk about bond polarity, we think about that as a difference of electronegativity between two atoms that are undergoing a bond. Okay, so if we look at each of, I got two different molecules here. Uh, I got carbon tetrafluoride, and here we have CCL2F2. And so each of these bonds have some kind of polar nature. There's a difference in electronegativity, right? How much an, uh, an atom pulls on electrons within a bond. Each of these bonds here, uh, our fluorine is more electronegative than carbon, okay? And so if we said that the electronegativity of fluorine is greater than the electronegativity of carbon, what that means is that this fluorines, each of these fluorines are pulling on the electrons more than carbon is. So they each have individual dipole moments towards those fluorine atoms away from our carbon. Same would be true over here. So we still have those dipole moments pointing towards fluorine. If we went and we saw, we looked at the electronegativity of carbon as well, uh, and how that compares to chlorine, we'd say that the electronegativity of chlorine is also greater than the electronegativity of carbon. And so we'd see that in this case, we would get a dipole moment pointing towards the chlorines as well. Now, what does this mean for my overall molecule? Well, each of our bonds are polar, right? Because there's a difference in electronegativity here. Each of these bonds that are represented here and here would be polar bonds. There's gonna exist <coughs> a uh, pull of electrons towards one atom versus the other. Now, if we're looking at a full molecule like we have here and here, we'll look at, well, what happens to uh, my overall pull of electrons? Is it pulled towards one side of the atom versus one side versus the other side? So we're looking at this, we have to focus not just on individual bonds, but also the geometry, the shape of our molecule, okay? So over here, we notice that this would be tetrahedral in shape. Well, tetrahedral, uh, is a shape where it's symmetrical. They're each pulled uh, across, uh, away from each other in 109.5 degree bond angles. This is also tetrahedral in shape. Okay. Well, they're both tetrahedral in shape. Now, if we go ahead and we look here, and we would see the difference is that we have chlorines here, and over here we have fluorines. Well, if I were to look at my overall pull of electrons, my overall dipole moment, we notice that each of these vectors are gonna cancel each other out for each of our dipole moments. Because we cancel out the dipoles of each bond, there's no net pole of electrons one way or the other on this molecule. And so this molecule would be nonpolar. There is no net dipole moment being pulled one way or the other. Whereas we look over here, this molecule is also tetrahedral, but my fluorines are more electronegative than my chlorines, which means that this polar nature is gonna be greater than this polar nature for my bonds. What ends up happening now is that we have a net pull of the electrons towards these two fluorines, and we would have an overall dipole moment for my molecule pointing towards my fluorine side. Even though the chlorines are pulling on the electrons, away from carbon, they're not pulling as strongly as the fluorines are. And as a consequence of this, we have this overall dipole moment pointed towards our negative side, leaving us having a positive side. So now we have these two poles, a positive and a negative pole of our molecule, and so therefore, this would be a polar molecule. And that is because there is a net dipole moment in this molecule. And so kind of a way that we can visually look at a molecule is we gotta take into consideration geometries, is we'll notice that this molecule is asymmetrical in shape. It's not the same if I were to rotate it and look all the same at it. Whereas this molecule is symmetrical in shape. If I were to take this molecule and rotate it around, it would look the same no matter what way I was looking at it. Over here, it wouldn't because if I were to rotate this, we'd see, well, our chlorines are over here, my fluorines are over here, and that changes what the molecule looks like. So when we're trying to predict polarity, we gotta look at our bond polarity and then see how that affects our molecular geometry and from that conclude, is there a net dipole moment or no net dipole moment 
that lets us know whether it's a polar molecule or it is a nonpolar molecule.